Good morning and welcome to our Sunday worship on this nearly last day of August. How amazing that the summer has flown by. It's wonderful to be with you and Larry, thank you so much for that lovely prelude. And our opening hymn is Where Charity and Love Prevail. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. and giver of all good things. Graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
These psalms are portions of, of Psalm 105. We'll say it in unison. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name and make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord in his strength, continually seeking his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. Israel came into Egypt, and Jacob became a sojourner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people exceedingly fruitful. He made them stronger than their enemies, whose heart he turned so that they hated his people and dealt unjustly with his servants. He sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. Hallelujah. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing, yet he was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of many people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land to a land that is good and a broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. 
weep with those who weep, live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. And on the third day, be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block 
to me. While you are setting your mind on, not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone wants to become my follower, let them deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will profit a man if they gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels and the Father's glory, and then we will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, you are this, there are some standing here who will not taste death, for they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. This is a strange experience for me because I don't preach sitting down, but I couldn't figure out any place to put my computer where I could preach standing up. So I'll kind of glance at some notes and tell you some stories and we'll see how that goes. When I was a very small child, I learned the meaning of being grounded. It was when my daddy took the black covering off the outside of the wires and all the color wires inside got separated. And one special wire had to be connected to another special wire or special little metal thing. Daddy told me that was so if the power got too much sometimes, it would help it stay in control and not break anything or start a fire. That's what I always thought being grounded was. But if you look it up in a dictionary or more likely on Google today, the electric definition of grounded is about number five down the list. The first one is the psychological and the therapeutic definition of grounded, which really has only come about in the past 20, 35 years or so. And of course, the grounded that some people thought I was talking about at the beginning, the punishment, that's only been around um, since maybe the late 50s, or early 60s. But grounding happens in all different kinds of places in our life. And all three of the lessons today are about being grounded in different ways. Moses is grounded in the awe and power of God's presence and God's promise and Moses' own call. Jesus is grounded in his very being and the prop promise made manifest. And Paul is grounded in the love that Jesus made manifest and in the mission of sharing that love, teaching that love, and bringing that love out to the world. Can you imagine yourself as Moses out there in the wilderness, nobody else around, just doing your thing, kind of hanging out, not really paying much attention to anything? We all have had those days, and for the past several months, we've had many more of those days. But all of a sudden, something catches his attention a brightness, a shocking thing, something startling to him. And we know, because this is a familiar lesson, that that was the burning bush. And at first, there is an angel calling to Moses. But then, when Moses responds, it is God, God's self, speaking to Moses. And this is the first time the commentaries tell us that God has actually spoken to a human in our scripture, setting up the basis for the relational, interactional 
life we have with our Lord. So there Moses is in this wilderness place with dust and dirt and rocks and thorns and who knows what animal refuse. And the first thing that God says after come closer is take off your sandals. We can get that on the surface, take off your sandals is a sign of reverence. But at that time, sandals also meant many other things as they do today or taking them off. We know them as a way of being respectful, as they did then. We know them as a way of keeping things clean, as they did then. We know them as a way of being ourselves, kicking off our shoes, putting our feet up, and just being ourselves. If we can do that in someone else's house, we know that we're at home and we're accepted. But in the time of Moses, Sandals, just like Louboutins are today, were a sign of status and class for many people. They were also a sign of who you belong to. In the slaves of Pharaoh, the bottoms, the soles of their sandals, printed in the dust, I am a slave of Pharaoh. Sandals were sometimes taken off to break a vow, or if there had been a legal commitment or a covenant, the people would take their sandals off to break it. So in Moses' life, having your sandals be asked to come off was significant and had many, many meanings. Now, what about you? What are your sandals? What sandals are on your feet? Because what the sandals do is cover the sole of our foot. They protect the sole of our foot from knowing what is actually there underneath it. They protect it from sharp things and sometimes some nice things. They protect it, they cover it, they keep it safe. But when you take your sandals off, your sole is left open and free to touch the ground around you. Now God said, this is holy ground. But we know, you and I know, that all ground is holy because God is present in all ground. God is present in creation and God gave us the stewardship of God's presence in creation. So, I won't ask you to do it right now, but let me tell you, if we were all sitting in church at St. Paul's, I'd make you stand up and I'd make you take off your shoes and I'd make you feel the cold tile under your feet and the grout lines and maybe a nick or a ditch in one of the little tiles near you. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I figured today people wouldn't necessarily be having their shoes on anyway. But having that sense of knowing what you're connected to is really profound. So Moses responds to this startling thing and listens to God as God introduces in the traditional line of being the father of all the forebears and the God of all. And so Moses bows his head. He wants to be respectful and listens to what is happening here. Now, one of the important things about this interaction with God and Moses is this is the transition point between being a child and a youth, a young adult, and turning toward the new life of being a prophetic leader. So just sitting down is just problematic. If you were Moses, what would you do? Would you listen? Would you think you were having a breakdown? Would you really question what was going on here? But in Moses' time, that wasn't such a strange thing to have a sense of the presence and the reality of God with us and in our daily life. Now, God is showing 
an amazing thing right here because in the reasons that God gives for calling Moses to this mission, God is reciting all the things that God's people have been praying for and asking about. God didn't decide, oh, I've noticed those Egyptians are being kind of cracky. I think I'll go clean things up. God clearly says, I have heard the prayers of my people. I have heard their laments. God is responding to an outreach from God's people. God is responding to an outreach from Israel. God is connected and connecting with us, with them. Now, Moses keeps saying, but why me? I don't have any gifts and talents. I don't know how to do this. Why will they listen to me? And God answers each of one of those questions one by one and finally says, you don't have to say anything. Just tell them that I am. And the lesson that Moses needs to get from this and the lesson that each one of us needs to get from this is that it's not about our gifts, our talents, our abilities, or our failings, our inabilities, our sins. What it's about is being present with God. Because Moses isn't doing these things on his own. Moses is doing these things hand in hand with God. God's presence is what is making everything that will come possible. Now, we long for God, many of us, but the thing is, we can't know God unless we actually go to where God is, unless we take off our shoes, and follow in the sometimes thorny, sometimes lovely, sometimes scary, sometimes just very messy path and live and walk with God. We can't just be spectators. YouTube is the new thing, as we all know. Well, it's been a new thing for other people for a long time, but it's just a new, new thing for me lately. My daughter has taught herself myriad things from YouTube, crocheting, cooking, drink mixing. She's done all those things by watching, responding, and actually doing them. But there are some things that you can't sit back and watch. Those of you who watched Big Bang Theory may remember Sheldon trying to teach himself to swim from the internet and lying on the floor in the living room and moving his arms and kicking his legs and being really surprised when it didn't work in the water. Being with God is a little like that. We need to be present with God and actually doing the things with our hands and our heart and our feet and our mouth so that we are expressing God's love and God's holy ground. This is not just about following God to get to know God, but it's about not keeping a distance from the other people that God is loving as well. It's about understanding that we don't have the privilege of anger that we act on. We certainly have the, the right to be angry, but we don't get to be angry on God's behalf. That's God's job. And we don't get just randomly to choose that we are the ones that get to punish somebody that doesn't agree with us. That's God's job. And how we are present as Christians to God is to recognize and allow that to be God's job. And as much as Many people, and I put myself right at the top of the list, struggle with people that I believe are evil and harmful 
and out to undermine the good of the world, I have to constantly kick myself and say, they are God's children too. I can hate what they do, but I'm not allowed in God's world to hate them. So each of us has something that comes into our life that we may or may not notice as a burning bush. I'd like to end this right now by reading something from Jan Richardson. Some of you may know this wonderful woman whose retreats and songs and poems and blessings are, have been printed and are shared throughout this country, at least I don't know about others. And she has posted this week a blessing for the a blessing at the burning bush. And I'd like to close with that. You will have to decide if you want this, want the blessing that comes to you on an ordinary day when you are minding your own path, bent on the task before you that you have done a hundred times, a thousand. You will have to choose for yourself whether you will attend to the signs, whether you will open your eyes to the searing light, the heat, whether you will open your ears, your heart, to the voice, to the voice that knows your name, that tells you this place where you stand, this ground so familiar and therefore unregarded, is, in fact, holy. You will have to discern whether you have defenses enough to rebuff the call, excuses sufficient to withstand the pull of what blazes before you, whether you will hide your face, will turn away, back toward what exactly? No path from here could ever be ordinary again, could ever become unstrange to you whose seeing has been scorched beyond all saving. You will know your path, not by how it shines before you, but by how it burns within you, leaving you whole as you go from here, blazing with your inarticulate, your inescapable yes. Amen. say together the Nicene Creed, which is printed in your order of service. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Collect for Hope and Renewal. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence, 
and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Re revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest, and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The prayers of the people can be found in your bulletin. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends and neighbours, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Rob, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially Edie, Fran, Malcolm, Jane, John, Maria, Kersey, Kerry, Erica, and the victims of Hurricane Laura. Please add the names of anyone you are carrying in your heart today. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. As we pray through our parish list, we lift the following people to you, giving thanks for each of them and asking for your blessing on their lives. Bev Naylor, Charlie and Carol Nelson, Rich, Meg and Emma Nelson, Stephen, Cynthia and Chris Nelson, Teresa Nevis, Guy and Mary Sue Newbery, Keith, Sarah, Joe, Megan and Beth Nyan. Rodney Obian, Sarah O'Connor and James, Michael, Landon, Hunter and Catherine O'Connor, Diane and Joseph Olympio. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially the people of St. Paul's, who faithfully care for one another, providing connection, encouragement and peace of mind through a challenging time. Please take a moment to add your own thanksgivings. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, 
that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Please add the names of anyone whose loss you are grieving today. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honour and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Please offer one another a sign of God's peace today and every day. My announcements this week are pretty much the same as last week's because the time is approaching. Um, not only are we offering the Transforming Questions formation series, but we're also starting up EFM again, Education for Ministry. And this is, it's not, as we've said so many times, it's not education for ordained ministry. It's education for whatever ministry God calls you to. A, a, a very inspiring and helpful way of looking at the Old and New Testament, at um, the history of our, of our faith and the, um, the all of the core values and um, inspirations that have come from many wise minds and faithful people over the ages. So do consider joining one of our three groups. Um, we'll be meeting by Zoom. Um, the people to speak to are Ashley Jane um, in the office, and she will put you in touch with um, one of, one of the mentors of the groups, um, or Kirsten in the office, and she too can connect you with one of the mentors, depending on which timing you're interested in, which day and time. So I encourage you to take part in EFM and Transforming Questions, beginning this coming month. And again, we're very much hoping and planning to offer an open air service on Sunday, September the 13th. So look out for details of that as well. And if you've been um, sending out or receiving cards from other parishioners, some of them are decorated with drawings or stickers or whatever it may be, but they're just a way of reaching out to one another for no particular reason except that we love each other. And uh, Cheryl is in charge of that ministry. So if you would like to send out some cards, they come addressed and stamped. All you have to do is decorate the card if you want to and write a note in it. And it's an especially nice project for children. So uh, do let us know if you would like to take part in that. Cheryl is your person. And let your light so shine before all people that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. We'll sing our doxology.
most blessed Savior, together with the faithful of every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are being offered to the Father, we desire to offer you our praises and thanksgivings. We present to you ourselves and our souls and bodies with the earnest wish that we may always be united to you. And since we cannot now receive you in the sacraments, we pray that you come spiritually into our hearts and we unite ourselves to you and embrace you, O Jesus, with all the love of our souls. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in our hearts. The blessing of God Almighty be with you today and always. The blessing of God be with you today and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to join in singing the closing hymn. Go in peace now to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.